Hello and welcome to a special video made by me, Mr. Barton, for Tez Maths. Now recently I wrote an article for the Tez Resources magazine entitled Dotty Thinking and I've had quite a few tweets asking me for the resources that I used to create the article and the resources I used in the lesson so I thought I would upload them all onto a Tez Resources page so you could have them. So firstly a little bit of background and um, the idea behind the article is it's an activity that I use uh, for any class of any age and any ability, whenever I'm teaching uh, things like mean, median and mode and comparing statistical diagrams and analyzing things statistically. Because I tend to find that unless you have a decent data set, and by decent I mean something that the kids have an interest in, have a bit of ownership in and mean something to them, then the whole concepts of averages and ranges and cumulative frequency diagrams or anything like that can be completely lost on them because they've no interest in it. It doesn't mean anything to them. So it's just a simple idea I use it's nothing nothing special um, and I call it how many dots so um, firstly uh, I've put a link to the article itself just in case you want to give it a read and the first part of the resource is the PowerPoint file that I use now there's three uh, kind of levels of this depending on your age and your ability of your students but um, we're gonna go straight to number three so what I do is I get this PowerPoint fired up and I say to the students, here are the rules. Um, I'm going to project a certain number of dots onto the board for less than one second. I want you to have a look at it and then write down how many dots you think there are. No conferring, no cheating, no saying your guess to anybody else. And then I go three, two, one, and we can play at home if we like here. So three, two, one, there you go. And that's it. And they write down how many dots they think they were. And I make them promise not to tell anybody their guess. And then I go around the room and I collect everybody's guesses in and record them on the board. Once again, making people promise that they will not change their guess dependent on what somebody else has said. And I collect it using the attached Excel spreadsheet. Uh, so guess one there. So say somebody thinks there's 36 guesses, the next person 43, 40, 37, 100, 24, and so on. Now, um, once I've collected a whole class set's worth of guesses in, it's then up to me what I do with it as a teacher. So I might want my students to practice working out the mean of that data set or the median or the mode or the range, or I might want to get straight onto the analyzing and the comparing of it. So what I've done, I'm no Excel whiz by any means, so I'm sure you could do this using fancy macros, but I've gone for the classic red rectangle technique. So once all your guesses are recorded, if you want your students to work out the mean, you can then quickly check the answer. So the mean of that data set is 48, the median is 37, the mode, well there isn't a mode for that one, just check that it does actually work. Yep, there you go, it calculates the mode and the range is that. And now comes the fun bit, because once you've got all those guesses down, your students are absolutely desperate to know how many dots there were. And the reason they're desperate to know is because you've created a data set here, and sure, it doesn't look like the most exciting data set in the world, but because your students have created it themselves and they have a bit of ownership, it is very exciting to them. So you can get a load of work out of them whilst they're desperate to know how many dots there actually were. So as I say, you can get them working out mean, medium, mode, and range, and you can get them drawing every statistical diagram under the sun, if you like. But things get really interesting when we introduce a second data set. Now one option for this is that you can get another class, maybe a parallel class, another year seven or another year 10 class, um, and you can get a data set off them. And then once you've got that data set down, you can then say to the students, okay, whose was the better data set? Can you work out the statistics for that, for that data set? And that introduces a nice element of comparison with it. But my favorite thing to do is to go around the class again. So this is why I've got guess two. And what I say here is, I'm not gonna tell you how many dots there were, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you an opportunity to have another guess. You're not gonna see the number of dots again, but if you want, you can stick with your original guess or you can change to a different guess. So I go to person one, you guessed 36 before. Do you wanna stick with that or do you wanna change your guess? And they may say, well, I'm confident, I'm sticking with 36. 43 might be thinking, well, wait a minute, someone said 100 there, I'm gonna up my guess to 50, and so on. Now, before you do this, and before you collect your second data set, a really nice thing to do with the students is to say, how do you think the mean, medium, mode, and range will change for this second data set? And it's really, really, really interesting because what tends to happen is that either the mean goes up quite a bit or the mean goes down quite a bit, largely dependent on what these first few people say, and especially if you've got a confident, you know, bright student with one of the first guesses who says, no, it's definitely a hundred, then everyone else's guesses tend to creep up. 
But what's even more interesting is that the range tends to come right in as everyone's guesses kind of congregate together. And that makes it perfect for analysis. Because if you've drawn, say, a box plot or a cumulative frequency diagram for guess one, and then you've got another one for guess two, and then you say, okay, what are the differences? Well, concepts such as the, as the range actually start to mean something to students. Whereas before the range is a bit of a vague concept, this time the range becomes, yeah, the difference between our highest guess and our lowest guess. It's, it's a measure of how spread out our guesses are. And students get to understand concepts such as the range and the mean much, much better. And even more interesting than that, what you tend to find with this, due to a phenomenon called the wisdom of the crowd, is that the mean of those first set of guesses tends to be far closer to the actual number of dots than the mean of the second guesses. Because people acting independently tend to be much better than crowds acting together influenced by each other. So that's quite an interesting thing to discuss. And again, I've put here all the statistics for all the kind of formulas worked in for working out the mean and the median and the mode and the range of guess two. Um, other options could be if you've got older or higher ability students, I've put this down here, how many dots better or worse. So this is where I um, get students comparing data sets. So I say, okay, you've got your, we've got our guesses down. Here's another class's uh, guesses. Were ours better guesses or worse guesses? Here, this time I've put another class's guessing is in a, in a group frequency table. So this time, how are we gonna compare that? How on earth are we gonna get the mean out of that table? How about if we've got it as a bar chart or ours better than that or worse than that? And we're getting students comparing statistical diagrams. There's a cumulative frequency, there's a histogram. I could have drawn a box plot. I could have drawn a stem and leaf diagram. And I just think that if you can create a data set like this, and it's simple, it only takes about 30 seconds to create it, you can get a load of interesting maths out of it. And because students have created it, because they own it, they're much more likely to be engaged with it and argue whether the mean's better than the median, or argue what you can get from a pie chart or a cumulative frequency diagram. And then once all that's sorted, of course, all that's left to do is reveal how many dots there actually were. How many do you reckon? Did you guess too high or too low? Well, let me tell you, there are exactly 58 dots. If I just change that to red, you will see 58 dots. So there you go. There's a dotty thinking or how many dots. Um, if you're watching this video on YouTube and you want to link to all these resources, if you just click on the uh, kind of hyperlink I've put in the description at the bottom, you should be able to get it there. Okay, hope that was useful. Take care. Bye-bye.